This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The Word of God and everything can be going on around us and that the power of God and revelation and insight, understanding. And you know what? We can be totally distracted by what's taking place because we are being pulled away by the cares of the world. Well, we are excited about the Word of God today. We are excited about what God is doing in the earth. This year is something that we will definitely put in the books that we have never experienced before. I'm telling you, child of God, you are living in the midst of a historical time, something that you'll be able to pass on, that you've lived and living through a pandemic, as the Bible calls it, a plague. But you know what? The Bible says that no weapon formed against his people will prosper. And so he doesn't say the weapon won't be formed. He said that it won't prosper against you. So we know that even though there are things that are going on outside and in the kingdom of darkness and outside in the things of the world, but we believe as the people of God and as the children of God that we are equipped and we are under the shadow of the Most High God. Well, this morning, I believe that it's vital that we just really dive into what God's Word says. And so we're going to look at what I taught a couple weeks ago on the right place and the right time. And as I mentioned, you know, being in the wrong place at the wrong time is very costly. It is something that can be very fatal in many instances. You know, we hear so many instances about senseless tragedies that take place and how things that are just notorious and treacherous that are taking place. Uh, we're living in the most dangerous times, the most violent times, similar to what the Bible talked about with Noah and how it says that the earth was filled with corruption. But because of Noah finding favor with God, he was able to escape the corruption, the violence, the destruction, the decay, all the things that were taking place because he found favor with God. And so Noah was in the right place at the right time. And I believe that you, child of God, are going to be and you are in the right place and at the right time. Right here with God, tuning in to his voice, tuning in to what his plan has for your life, giving attention and attentiveness to what he's written concerning your life and the things that he's promised to you. And so we're wanting really to get over into this and get a revelation of walking in God's favor, walking as, um, as Creflo says, a barefooted priest so that we can begin to get a revelation of what he wants to do. So I was praying the other morning and God was speaking to me about some things. And so I just want to share with you and I have some scriptures that we want to look at and so my prayer this morning is that we will begin to experience the unlimited power of the Almighty God. And so if you would, look with me in the book of Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, and we're going to look at the message translation, the message translation. Because his power is present today 
to do so many things in our life. So we're going to look at a few examples here of people who have experienced being at the right place and at the right time and how their lives were changed, how they experienced the favor of God, how they were elevated, received preferential treatment, they were preferred, they were esteemed, they were regarded. All those things happen when we understand that we will be in the place where God has destined us to be. And so we're going to look at the message translation. So if you would just follow along with me, or if you have that version, I encourage you to just read along and I believe that it'll be a blessing to your life. We'll start here in verse 38. The message translation, verse 38. Um, it says, as they continued their travel, Jesus entered into a village. A woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word he said. I love that about Mary, the fact that the scripture describes her as hanging on every word that Jesus said. You know, that's a great adjective. That's a great description for someone's life. I don't know about you. I want to be one who hangs on every word of God. And so you've got to imagine the fact that she was in Jesus's presence, in his company. And so the scripture says here, uh, she hung on every word he said, but Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later, she stepped in, interrupting them. Think of that. Jesus is in the room doing what he was designed to do, I'm sure imparting, sharing the word of God, discipling, tutoring those who were in his presence, Mary and the others. But it said Martha was pulled away and she stepped into where Jesus was and interrupted them. I don't know about you, Martha, I wouldn't want to interrupt Jesus. I mean, it's one thing to maybe interrupt some of your house guests or company, but to interrupt Jesus? And listen to what she says here. She says, Master, don't you care? that my sister has abandoned the kitchen to me? Tell her to lend me a hand. Martha, Martha, Martha. I think we have to recognize and we have to pray that we don't become Martha's where we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because here is Jesus in her home, right in, I imagine, her living room or den or whatever. And this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But she was more pulled away and distracted by what was going on in the kitchen. Maybe, you know, washing dishes or sweeping the floor or maybe she was cooking or to the point where she, the scripture says, stepped in while Mary and the others were hanging on every word that Jesus spoke to the point where she says to Jesus, don't you care that she has left me or that Mary has abandoned me? Tell her to lend me a hand. And you know, this is a clear example, I pray, of the fact that the Word of God and everything can be going on around us 
and that the power of God and revelation and insight, understanding, and you know what? We can be totally distracted by what's taking place because we are being pulled away by the cares of the world, carried away by maybe, you know, the activity or the busyness in our lives that we miss what Jesus is saying. And I don't know about you, child of God. I don't know. And I pray that's not your testimony, and certainly I don't want it to be mine, is that I want to be right where the wisdom of God is being poured out. I want to be hanging on and getting a hold of what God wants to be spoken and God wants me to receive in my life. And so, you know, we have to guard ourselves against the spirit of complaining because in essence, this was what she started to do here because she was upset by what was going on and what she felt like she had to do in the kitchen. It says that Martha was pulled away by all, so it must have been quite a bit of things that were pulling on her and getting uh, her attention away from Jesus by all that she had to do. And so we have to be mindful of the spirit of complaining. I thought about that this morning because what that does is it limits God's ability to move in our lives. We can be in a place where God is moving, the wisdom of God is flowing, revelation, insight, all these great things are happening. But on the other hand, because Mary was in the right place and Martha was in the wrong place, Martha was not in the position to benefit from what was taking place. And all she wanted to do was to interrupt and to step in to what, the God, what God was doing and, and what Jesus was doing at that time. So we want to really look at our lives today and make sure that we guard against being in the wrong place, in the wrong time, the spirit of complaining, limiting God in a place of fear. You know, because fear will do that too. Because we can limit our ability and the possibilities of God in our life because we're afraid. Maybe Martha was afraid, you know, I've got all these things to do, and if I don't interrupt, if I don't step in now, they're not going to get done. And I, you know, got to make sure that these things are done, that, you know, the kitchen is in order or things are in their proper place. But you know what? I'm not saying to neglect the kitchen and just neglect um, important areas of our life, but I'm saying know the time to do it. And that takes wisdom, knowing where to be and at the right time to be there. Because as we read in the scripture, it wasn't the time to be in the kitchen, Martha. It wasn't the time to interrupt, of all people, Jesus, and to step into his conversation. And so she lost sight of what she was supposed to be doing at the time. And then consequently, she felt as if she was alone and that Jesus had abandoned her and that her sister had abandoned her. And you know, that's what the enemy does when fear comes in and fear thinks that, you know, whatever is needing to happen should happen at the moment and the time in which it will happen. And we kind of put God on our time clock and we want him to move at the time in which he's going to do it. And if he's not going to do it, we work ourselves up into a frenzy and we don't think that he's going to do it. And it has to be done on our calendar. And we interrupt situations and we start doing things in and of the flesh. And we start trying to do what, you know, instead of getting into a place of rest and getting at Jesus' feet. Now, Mary, on the other hand, 
Jesus privileged her. Jesus blessed her in allowing her to be in the company of all men. And to allow her was a blessing there because typically women were not in the um, same general common meeting area of men. Usually men would be on one area and women would be on the other side. But Jesus made an exemption for Mary. And he said, she's hanging on every word. Now, let's read a little further down here and let's look at what Jesus said because I love how he responds to Martha as she was pulled away and as she felt being abandoned and wanted Jesus to um, force her to come and lend her a hand. He wanted, uh, the master said to, Je uh, to Martha here, he says, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much. You're fussing far too much. And that's what happens when we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. We're out of the place where God wants us to be and perhaps we might be in strife or we might be in complaining or in fear, but Martha was being fussy. She was being argumentative. He says, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. I love that. When we're not taking out the time to get in the presence of God and spend time with him, it's so easy to get fussy. It's so easy to get worked up over nothing because we're not tuning in to our prayer time and to God, time with God. Now we're tuning in to our emotions, which are many instances negative emotions by her being fussy. We're tuning in to fear-filled words, anxiety. And so he says, you're fussing far too much, getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing is essential. So in essence, Martha, what you have to do in the kitchen, that's not essential. That's not the time to be concerned, to come in, to interrupt, to step in what I'm teaching, what I'm trying to impart to your life. One thing is essential. And you know what that one thing was? It was getting a hold of what Jesus was saying and knowing where to be and being at the right place at the right time. And so he tells her, he says, one thing only is essential and Mary has chosen it. So Mary chose to be at Jesus' feet as one translation Mary chose the right place at the right time. It's the main course, the scripture says, and won't be taken from her. And so I love the fact because we read on, and for the sake of time, I won't read on, but it goes on and describes even how when their brother Lazarus passed, and the scripture says that, Mary and Martha, they went on ahead to, you know, check on their brother and how their reactions were totally different. M Martha was still in a place of anxiety, panic, but Mary, on the other word, she responded in a total different way. The scripture talks about how she waited and acknowledged before she went ahead to visit and attend to the situation. I get the sense that as a result of the deposit that Mary made in her life, if you read on, you'll see the distinction, even how they responded in the midst of tragedy, 
in the midst of loss, in the midst of grief. You know why? Because of the word that was deposited and because of Mary carving out the word and knowing the importance of the word and being favored with the word and that favor caused grace to come over her life and that grace enabled her to deal with the situation. Now who's to say that Mary would have not helped out Martha? We're not saying that, you know, they may have had something going on as sisters or siblings, but you know what? That's not the issue. The issue is Mary knew what was essential. And as a result, she was prepared for the circumstances of her brother Lazarus passing on and everything else that needed to be done. So Mary might have said, you know, Martha, I'm coming. I'm not abandoning you. I will assist you. But you know what? It's the time to do it. The scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that there is a season and there's a time to everything. So we've got to know and we have to ask the Lord to show us the time so that we're in his time and we're moving as he desires to move. And then we can begin to be where he wants us to be because there's a time to every season. There's a time to, you know, go in the kitchen. There's a time to hear the word of God. There's a time to lay at Jesus' feet, to hang on every word. But we've got to know, and you know what? That only comes by spending time with the Lord. And so every day, I don't know about you, I want to be where God wants me to be throughout the day because if I'm allowing my day to be ordered by him, then my day will be conducted in a way where he's able to direct me. And the scripture says, if I honor him, and then in all of my ways, I acknowledge him that he will direct my path. So we just have to honor him. And we have to give him the regard, give him the authority to speak into our lives, to carve out, not get so busy, and then as a result, we're fussy, then we're complaining, then we're thinking we're alone, that it's, you know, no support, no help. But no, it all started because she was out of place and she didn't make it essential to receive the word of God. And so these are things that are very practical and perhaps that we should make sure that we guard against the spirit of complaining and that we understand, even as the scripture talks about minding our own affairs and minding our business and not being a busybody, but understanding the business that is important to the kingdom of God and the other busyness that we should do. And like I said, we're not saying neglectful, you know, not to attend to domestic affairs. Certainly not. I believe in the kitchen and doing dishes and laundry and anything else that needs to be done. But you know what? It's the time. It's when. It's knowing and being led. Those are the key things that I want us to look at today. These are the key things that I want us to look at today. So we have several scriptures and several people that we can look at in different examples because we are in the midst of one of the busiest times and as believers, we must immerse ourselves in the word. There are many influences in the world that compete for our attention. The cares of this world the Bible says we'll choke out the word, the cares, the anxiety, the fears, all the things that are going on around us. These things have the ability to influence our minds, influence our thoughts, to overcome us, to overwhelm us. But you know what? We cannot allow it to crowd out and to keep the word of God from being harvested and bringing forth fruit in our lives. 
Are you at a crossroad looking for direction on which path to take? God seeks to give you divine direction and guide you to His best for you. In her life-changing series, Right Place, Right Time, Taffy Dollar takes us through the process of receiving direction from God and understanding how decisions give way to our ultimate destination. We have to make up in our minds when we're in the right place at the right time, the favor of God will show up and will show out in our lives and the glory of God will be revealed and cause us to be elevated and to experience His goodness on our lives. We gotta stay positive. We've gotta stay in faith. We've gotta be steady. We gotta be patient. We've gotta be optimistic. Call or visit the website on your screen and get all four messages today for a love gift of $25 or more and rise above your circumstances. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust Him and believe Him that there's a will of God for your life, there's something I'm supposed to do, and I will not miss it this year. I, I had to come to see Christ. Once I heard he was here, it was like a dream. Like, I, I don't even do this for celebrities. Like, when I heard he was here, I'm coming. I'm coming. You will be satisfied. God's got your back. There's profit in serving God. Tell all your unsaved relatives. Tell your unsaved family members. Today was a really revolutionary me message, and it gives you such peace in your heart. You don't want to miss this experience. Register now for this free event by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. Jesus instructed us to take this gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. With the seeds you sow into Creflo Dollar Ministries, we extend this good news of grace to people on every single continent. They are empowered to see real change in their lives. That's exactly what you do when you send in your financial donations to support our outreach endeavors. You empower change in people's lives. And for that, we say thank you and God bless you. I'll see you next time here on Changing Your World. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends.